Hello, everybody. Mr. Williams here coming at you. And um, this week, we're going to start looking at Division. Division. Um, I know I've worked with some of you, one of my small groups, with the skill. But I'm going to... Oh, excuse me. Going to um, work with everybody now. This whole group mini lessons. But first, we're going to look at the application problem here. And it says Tyler planted potatoes, oats, and corn. There were 23 acres planted with potatoes. There were three times as many acres planted with oats as potatoes, and four times as many acres planted with corn as oats. How many acres did he plant with potatoes, oats, and corn in all? Well, the question, go right to the end. How many acres did he plant with potatoes, oats, and corn in all? Well, he planted 23 acres of potatoes. So, P equals 23. There were three times as many acres planted with oats as potatoes. So that phrase, three times, three times as many as potatoes. So that means that oats equals 23 times what? Three, right? And there were four times as many acres planted with corn as oats. So corn is going to equal 23, well, we'll do this. No, I'm sorry. 23 times 3. We'll do O for oats times 4. So first, we have to find out how many acres of oats were planted. And that's going to be 23 times 3. 23 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6. 69. So there were 69 acres of oats. And now we said for corn that it has to be oats times 4. So that's going to be 69 times 4. 4 times 9 is 36, 33, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 3, 27. So there were 276 acres of corn planted. And now let's know how many acres did he plant with all of them in all. In all of them, in all. So that's going to be 276 plus plus 69. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 9 is 18, carry the 1. 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 6 is 16, 2 plus 1 is 3. He planted 368 acres of all. It's just, once again, like we've been working on the last couple lessons, being able to realize what number is multiplied by what, and then finding those missing pieces, like we did with the corn, because we, we knew we had to find oats before we could find corn. Okay. So, like I said, today, we're going to solve division problems. We're going to start working on division. We're going to divide two-digit numbers by a one-digit number, and we're going to model it with an array. Now, an array is, um, you know, an array is like the squares. How many squares do I have here? There's six, so that's two times three. Four, three times two. There's six squares there. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at division, and we're going to look at how there's remainders left over, but specifically, we're going to look at using these word problems to figure out our uh, quotients and remainders. Remember, a quotient, quotient, I keep squeaking when I say quotient, 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 is the answer to a division problem. 
Just like a sum is the answer to an addition problem, a difference is the answer to a subtraction problem, product is the answer to a multiplication problem, a quotient is the answer to a division problem. So we're going to be working on getting quotients here. All right, the word problem says there are 12 students in PE class separated into four teams. How many students are on each team? Well, I'm sure a lot of us could do this pretty, pretty easily in our head. In fact, I know there's a few of you that could. Um, but I want to show those of us that might not be so well versed in division uh, one way to do it. And this is kind of a, a second grade, third grade way of looking at it. So there are 12 students in PE class. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, there's 12 students. They're each separated into four teams. Well, I need to put, I need to make four teams. That means I have to put the same amount of kids on each team. Can I do that? No. One, two, three, four. There are four teams of three. You could say 12 divided by four equals three. Division is the opposite of multiplication. Kind of like uh, to check your subtraction problems, you could just add the difference in the biggest number to, or smallest number together and you'll get the biggest number. Here you can multiply these two, the quotient and the uh, divisor, and you should get the answer. Um, but the important thing to realize here is there are 12 students in PE class, separated into four teams. How many students are in each team? Three. What is three telling us? Is three telling us how many teams? No. Three is telling us how many students are on each team. However, one more student joined the class described at the beginning of problem one. There are now 13 students to be divided into four teams. Draw an array to find out how many students are on each team. Well, once again, we can go one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, we have to make four teams again. Right, we'll just do it like we did last time, right, Mr. Williams? One team, two teams, three teams, four teams, and oh. Now we have an extra student. We have one remaining. We have one student who's a remainder. We can say 13 divided by 4 equals 3 remainder 1. So, much like the previous answer, there are four teams with three kids. But one unlucky, one unlucky student has to sit out, right? It's not very fair. He's a remainder. He's the extra student, he or she. So what I want you guys to realize is we, we had no remainder here. We had four three times, four, eight, 12. And we came up with that answer. However, here we had an odd number, 13. Three, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's why I got confused. I was like, wait, we counted three four times. Three, six, three, plus three, plus three, plus three. Three 
6, 9, 12. Here, we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. So we have 13 divided by 4 equals 3 with a remainder 1. Because you would do 3 times 4, that's 12, plus 1 is 13. If you look at... guys. If I look at a number bond of the number 13, what makes up that number? Well, 12 and 1. Okay, Christy bought 13 roses. Very nice of her. If she puts six roses in each vase, how many vases will she use? Will there be any roses left over? So this is kind of asking us to do a um, tape diagram If I, when I was reading the instructions. Once again, I'm not really that worried or ever that worried about tape diagrams. They're not, they're not, I don't think, the most efficient tool for teaching division. I like the array idea. You know, if we wanted to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Well, if she puts six roses in each vase, how many vases will she use? Will there be any roses left over? Oh, all we need to do is count one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so all those are going in one vase. We need, if she puts six roses in each vase, so we have another six left right here. That's one vase. Will there be any roses left over? Well, yeah, because we have six roses here. Well, how about back up? How many vases will she use? How many vases have we used? Two, because we have these six in one vase, these six in another vase. So she will use two vases, and there's going to be one left over. Now the question is, is she going to throw the rose out? You know, why don't she just put seven in one and six in another? Maybe she, uh, maybe she can't do that. Okay, this problem says Allison has 22 meters of fabric to sew dresses. She uses three meters of fabric for each dress. After how many dresses will Allison need to buy more fabric? Well, much like any of these word problems we've been working on, from multiplication to this, Go right to the end, and what is it asking you? After how many dresses will Allison need to buy more fabric? She has 22 meters of fabric. And when she uses three meters, she's made one dress. So the question is, how many threes are in that 22? How close is she going to get to 22 before she has to go buy more fabric because she's only got a couple a meter left. She doesn't have enough to make the next dress. So what you can do is you can use this strategy of skip counting. You know, you can do three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Ooh, go back one. All those together are 
21 meters. So that means she was able to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dresses. She was able to make seven dresses before she only had one meter of fabric left and she'd have to go buy more. Making a lot of dresses, right? Um, so what, the, what you need to remember, guys, is just thinking about how many of each number fits into it. So how many threes are in that 22? Well, there were seven threes, and we had one meter of fabric left over. Three times seven is 21. Those of us that know our multiplication can go three times seven is 21, with a remainder of one left, right? seven dresses and she'll have a remainder of one meter left over. Okay? So we're going to look at the problem sets and it's going to be asking you to do the same thing. It's using these array models, kind of looking at it. It says there are 19 identical socks. How many pairs of socks are there? Will there be any socks without a match? If so, how many? Well, how many socks are in a pair? What's a pair mean? Two, right? So if I can tell you right now, I have 19 identical socks. 19 is an odd number. Two is an even number. So there's no way you can add up two, an even number. You can't skip count by twos to get an odd number. But we can go one, two, question is, will there be, well it says how many pairs of socks are there? Will there be any socks without a match? If so, how many? Well we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pairs. Nine pairs of socks. Nine pairs of socks. One without a match. Sock without match. Okay? I'm just going to be doing that sort of thing for these problems, guys. Now, I say if it takes eight inches of ribbon to make a bow, how many bows can be made from three feet of ribbon? Will any ribbon be left over? One foot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One foot equals 12 inches. So if you have three feet, that means you have 36 inches. How many eights are in 36? Are you gonna have 11? What will you left over your remainder be? The library has 27 chairs and five tables. If the same number of chairs is placed at each table, how many chairs can be placed at each table? Will there be any extra chairs? If so, how many? The baker has 42 kilograms of flour. She uses eight kilograms each day. After how many days will she need to buy more flour? So it's just the same thing we've been doing the whole time, guys. All right, if you need me, please email me. Or um, just try your hardest, guys. Try your best. I want you to watch these mini lessons and apply the knowledge to those. Draw the arrays. Draw it out. Look at your division skills, okay?